Hi, I'm Bonnie Kempke. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Quilting on a Thread. So this is the third episode of my um, quilt journey on the Color My World pattern. Um, this pattern is by Wendy Williams. The link to where you can buy the pattern is in the description of this video, so please check that out. So in my previous two videos, I discussed um, finding the materials that I would use. And for any of you who've um, seen any of my quilting in the past, you know that I'm going to change my mind. So don't be surprised if I pop some new colors in on you. The other thing that you've already seen me do is go ahead and trace out all of my pattern pieces. Now what I didn't tell you is as I traced out those pattern pieces for each one of the blocks, I put them in a labeled Ziploc bag and the pieces for the um, that particular block are slipped in that bag. That way I know where my pieces are for a block as I begin it. So this is a paper piecing project. And I'm going to be quite honest with you, everyone atta attacks a paper piecing project differently. So I'm going to work in a way that is logical to me. Um, so the first thing I'm going to work on happens to be the second block in um, Miss Williams' pattern. So I want to discuss how I arranged my Mariner Star because if you'll recall I'm using a couple of reds, a couple of blues, and a couple of purples. And so it's important to me that those will all work together and pop based on the background that I choose. And so this is my background for the quilt that I've chosen and that recall is slightly different, well it's more than slightly different than um, Wendy's color choices. Wendy has this very, very busy background, and it's beautiful. It's just too much for me. So, but the Mariner Star, when I laid the colors out on the background I've chosen, so here's the reds. Here's the purples. and the blues, and that background just doesn't do it for me. So let me pick these back up and show you what I found. I found a background that has a Mariner star of its own, globes, it's very worldly. And so I thought that that might be more um, agreeable. So what I did is I went ahead and laid these colors out so that I could see the both backgrounds, the thought process for both backgrounds. And I laid that out and you can see that, at least for me, this seems to pick up and carry the colors more than this cloudy blue. The cloudy blue just kinds of it just, it doesn't click, but these, this clicks. And so this is the choice that I've gone with. So whenever you're working on something that is as specific in visuality as a Mariner star, you want to really see it. So before you start sewing. And so what I do when I have something that complex as a Mariner star is I will go ahead and take the pattern in full size and draw it out. I don't know if you can see this. This is actually, I just photocopied the um, two pattern pieces and put them together in what the Mariner star would look like. And I did several of these and then I colored them out so that I could go ahead and take a look. And so this was the original thought process that I would have red as my center and then the blue and purple would be the children colors, if you will. Um, and this looks okay. Color is mostly about does it go together and does it go together in a way that is pleasing to yourself. So then this was my secondary thought and this 
draws you in, which is what's supposed to happen with a Mariner star. This literally draws you in to the star. So you travel through the color combination. So this is more appealing to me, and this is the one I've chosen to work on. So that being the case, well, let me pull this back. That being the case, when I pull out the, the pieces, I'm trying to lay these out there for you. This is how the pieces go together. And so what I have done with my, um, my templates is I went ahead and wrote purple, purple. It already says dark, so I just said, well, I'm going to use dark purple, light purple. So I put all the colors in there. So the blue is in the center and the red... So I labeled them with the colors, so as I'm working with them, I'll be able to um, quickly grab the right colors that I'm working with. The Color of My World pattern is a pretty complete pattern. It's very, very inclusive. And so the instructions tell you to pre-cut your pattern pieces for the block that you're working on. And so I have done that. My pattern pieces are pre-cut here. And I've already pre-folded all of my templates so that they should be easy to work with. So I'm going to start with pattern piece one. And per the instructions, I'm going to start with item A. And of course, since this line indicates that this is the first, um, this is the first seam I'll be sewing, of course I want to start with A. The trick about foundation pattern, um, foundation paper piecing, is that this is the back, the template that you see is the back of your pattern. So when you have all of your pieces sewn and you turn it over, this will be the front. Therefore, logically, when you bring your piece over that you want to put in, and this is a background, when you bring that piece over, you want to flip it around and you want to iron it on to the back of your template, which is the front of your pattern. <clears throat> now, the background I've chosen is directional. So I need to find the top of that because this will be, I want my directional pieces to go around the circle in a clock and face out in that direction. So, this is the um, top of this piece, so I want to put it towards the top of this pie. So I want to find um, what's going to look interesting on this piece and just find a place that feels like it's going to look interesting. Fold my piece over here bringing it over to the ironing station. Iron that onto the piece of material I'm working with. Now that's affixed because of the paper piece, I mean because of the freezer paper. So now I'll bring that over here and I'll take my ruler. I like the add a quarter and I'm just going to come in here and I like to pre-cut that before I put the other piece in play. Um, just because it gives me something to line up. So I'll bring that over here. Cut that. What the add a quarter does is there's a lip on it. I, I bring it up to that paper. And that's what I use to cut. So now that's affixed and I have my quarter inch seam. Now, keep in mind that this is a different piece that will be sewn on later, so I want to seam from here to here. You want to pass over the stitch line by about a quarter of an inch. So this is going to be taking blue. It needs to be light. So now I'm going to take blue light, and that's going to be my next piece. I'm going to choose to use my modeled 
colors as my dark. I pre-cut these on angles because I knew that this would be coming as an angle. So I kind of pre-cut them again. So I want to line that up on that line, making sure that my blue is going to extend beyond there. And because I'm using solid colors, I went ahead and took a chalk pencil and marked on the back side so I would be able to tell what was the back side. So now I have that lined up and that's where I want to sew. So I'm gonna bring you over here to the sewing machine. So now here we are, and remember we want to sew from a quarter of an inch out to a quarter of an inch beyond that point. And we're gonna look at it from the um, fold marks. And so I suggest that you find some way of guaranteeing that you're not going to sew on that paper because you want to sew just on the edge of the paper, but off of the paper, making no holes into it. And so um, what I have done is I'm using a ditch foot. And I will use the ditch to guide that paper, the ditch guide, to guide along the paper and therefore get right into my, um, I'll, I'll be right on that fold but not touching the paper. Um, I'm using my Janome because my Janome will let me adjust the um, exact drop of my needle and so that's going to work very well for me. So let's get this seam sewn and see how she turns out. A few more stitches beyond that. One more. Now we do not have to lock these stitches because when we come along later on and lock those stitches in place, with the um, next seam and you can see from the paper lifting up that we have definitely not sewn into the paper. So then we will take this back over and iron this piece out in place. So I've continued and I've added all of these in this little pie. I've added these. Now I'm getting to this and that's where I wanted to come back and show you what you have to do now. So we started with one, I mean with A, we added B, C, and D. Now we're coming to E. So you can see what it looks like here. <clears throat> so we come now and we fold all this over and this is trimmed out. <clears throat> so we're gonna come in with the red and this is red light, so this is the light color. You just want to make sure that we're going to pick that up along in there. And we're going to sew that. I'll be right back. Mm. So when we finish sewing that seam, we're going to just fold that over. Oops, pick that up, fold that over. We're going to iron that in place. <clears throat> and see, this time we're not having to worry about ironing on the back or anything else. We just want to iron that in place. <clears throat> so then we come over to this side and we carefully peel that off of anything that it's stuck to because now we're going to come in and sew, sew F in place. <clears throat> so we're going to go right along, trim that out. Now we're wet, ready for the dark purple. So remember that's the mottled color. <clears throat> Nothing on here is completely straight. So we're gonna come in here and trim up. Okay. 
and go make that scene. Be back in a moment. So we've sewn that seam. We'll fold this over. Bring that over here and fold it over. Get everything straightened out. Make sure that everything looks good. At this point, we want to just press everything down and make sure it's on that piece of template. <clears throat> so once we get that done, we come over, iron it on the back. Because now we're going to trim <clears throat> to the edges of the paper and trim that completely out. So we're going to just trim these completely out. Now, of course, for the curved side, we need to go ahead and use a pair of shears to do that. That's my first wedge. And I'll go ahead and do the second one and I'll be right back. And so now both piece one and piece two have been completed. <clears throat> and you're gonna need to do three more sets of these because these will sew together. These will join together here. And that's one quarter of your um, Mariner's compass. So we need to go ahead and then carefully peel these off so that we can sew piece one and piece two together. And we will be using the same pieces of freezer paper over and over again. And that's the cool part about freezer paper piecing is you're not sewing through the paper so you get to use those pieces over and over. And so I'm going to go ahead and sew these two together and then I will come back. Okay, so I've now done all four quadrants. So what that is, a quadrant would be piece one and piece two and then sewn together purple to purple so that you have that nice um, long point on your um, compass. So I wanted to show you what the back of these look like after, um, after we've used them. It's still able to be stuck to paper, I mean stuck to cloth, but it's probably losing its stickability at that point. But this is what the pieces look like when they're completed. Uh, I haven't cleaned them up yet, so. What I have done is I've um, ironed and starched each piece all over again because I will tell you with paper piecing, starch 
is king. Look at that point. That point is really, really good on each one of the compass points. And then on the back, they look just as smooth. Like I said, they haven't been dusted off. Um, I usually run a um, lint pad over them, but all of the pieces look nice and clean. So then what we do with these pieces, we take them and um, we're going to create halves now. Notice while we were working on the ironing and sewing of the paper piece itself, everything is ironed to one side. But when we sew together the two pie pieces to make one of the quadrants, they become, they get um, ironed out seams open. That's because it's going to make it easier to break that point um, when we get there. So. What I always do when I'm piecing something like this is I take the end and I make sure that my points are coming together on the end. You can open that up and you can see that the seams are coming together. So go ahead and pin that. Then I have to do the same anywhere there's a seam in the center. So where the purple and red are meeting, we want to make sure that those meet up nice and strong. So I would put another pin there. And then we have the center, and this is the most important point. So we have to open that up and make sure that they're meeting. And here I'll put a pin through the center of the seams. And then I'll open it up to make sure that those seams are still meeting. Now if all is good, then I can sew that together. So I'll go ahead and do the other one just the same. On anything where points are meeting in the middle, if you do not get them perfect, your whole block is going to um, lay oddly. So once I believe those are ready, I'll take them to the sewing machine now. So here we are with the completed Mariner's Compass. And I realized that before I continue or, and close this video out, I really want to go over how I got such a neat point on that compass. So to explain that, we turn to the back. And if you'll notice that all of the seams within each one of the pies go according to how the paper piecing pattern worked. So the seam for piece A presses towards piece B. Piece B presses towards piece C, and so on and so on. They press toward the next piece being attached. Now when you take two of the pi pieces and you sew them together, you have the choice of taking the seam to the side or opening the seam up and pressing it open, which is what the pattern suggests and it's certainly what I did. Now it's natural to me and it was spelled out in the instructions as well to go ahead and sew the four quadrants together. So one set of piece one and two, second set of piece one and two, third set, etc. Then they also recommended when you sew the other seams that you go ahead and sew them and press open as well. But Miss Williams did not specify how to piece that all together to come into the center. And there's a reason why she did not 
do that. There are a lot of different ways and theories to piece things coming together in a point. And so I have a couple of examples here. This one is where you piece them together and you flower them out. And that gives you a nice, pretty point. It's not a perfect point, but it's darn near close. Then there's another option where you instead press the points back towards the, the seam that they just came off of, which again gives a suitable point, but it's not crisp. So let me explain how I pieced um, the quadrants together. The first thing I did after everything was starched, repressed, and good and flat, I, I trimmed off the dog ears, and then I sewed the two quadrants together and ironed their seams open. It was very, very important to me that all of the seam joints were butted up to each other. So after I have the two halves sewn, then I come in and I lay them out together and I find that perfect place where they meet here. And I took a pin and went through the stitch line. Now, it's not easy to go straight through the stitch line. Once you find the stitch line, your pin will go through very easily, but you're often not right on that stitch line, which is mean you're going between the stitches on that stitch line. Um, and that's a little more precise, but I did that through the two pieces laying together. Now, then what I chose to do is start from the center and work my way out with the seam. So I sewed one side, came back to the center and sewed the other side. So let me tell you what I did to make sure to get that good point in the center. Um, as I was lining these up and folding them together, what I did is I took a pin and I put it right through the join, you know, joining of the, the seam. So right through the center of the two pieces. So I had them, you know, folded together. Let me just do it this way. I had them folded together and I went through both pieces of material right through the seam. So then I Put another pin just before the seam and the reason being that was to keep it from shifting and then you know because as you're working with material it will sh shift so then I sewed the one side I came out now I can remove these pins and of course I had also pinned up here at the um, join in the middle um, the two joints in the middle so let me so I have the, the pins here, the pin here, the pin here, and then I sewed up that seam. Now I could take all those pins out, put the pins in this side, turn it over, and sew that seam. Um, so in doing that, I didn't have any shifting and everything matched up quite nicely. Now that might seem like a lot of work, but it's well worth it to have these nice sharp points and sharp corners. And paper piecing will definitely give you sharp points, but they're still the joins that you, as the artist working on that project, need to worry about to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. So when you have a project that's as um, immense and as intense as the color my world um, quilt pattern is, then you want to be as precise as possible with everything. So I hope that explanation of how I've created my Mariner Star will help you on your journey in quilting in general and in this project if you choose to do the color my world project. I'd really like to see you again here on Quilting on a Thread.